John Waters, the actor and filmmaker, has been a prominent figure in the world of independent cinema since the 1960s. Born on April 22, 1946, in Baltimore, Maryland, Waters developed an early interest in film and quickly gained a reputation for his irreverent and boundary-pushing work. Waters' debut feature, Mondo Trasho, was released in 1969 and established him as a unique and daring voice in the world of underground film. He gained wider recognition with the release of Pink Flamingos in 1972, a cult classic known for its outrageous and provocative content. Throughout his career, Waters has written, directed, and starred in a number of critically acclaimed films, including Female Trouble, Polyester, and Hairspray. He has also worked as a writer, photographer, and visual artist, and has had his work exhibited in galleries and museums around the world. Despite the often controversial nature of his work, Waters has been praised for his unique vision and his ability to push boundaries and challenge conventions. He has been called a master of the transgressive and a punk poet of low-budget filmmaking, and his contributions to the world of independent cinema have been widely celebrated. Today, Waters continues to work as an actor, writer, and artist, and remains a beloved and influential figure in the world of film and the arts. His work continues to inspire and challenge audiences, and his legacy as a pioneering and boundary-pushing artist is secure. John Waters is a well-known actor, director, and writer who has been active in the film industry since the 1960s. His unconventional and often controversial style has earned him a cult following and made him an enduring symbol of the industry. Perhaps you first became aware of John Waters through his early films like Pink Flamingos or Hairspray, or maybe it was through his later acting roles in shows like Homicide Life on the Street or Feud. No matter when you first recognized him, there's no denying the impact he's had on the world of film and television. Do you remember the first time you saw John Waters on screen? What was your initial reaction? Were you shocked, amused, or confused? We'd love to hear your stories and memories related to this classic star. Throughout his career, John Waters has given us many funny, shocking, and even sad moments. And in this video, we'll be exploring some of the most memorable ones. From his early days as a provocateur to his later work as a respected actor and writer, there's no shortage of fascinating stories to tell. So, whether you're a longtime fan of John Waters or just discovering his work for the first time, we hope you'll keep watching and enjoy learning more about this iconic figure in the world of film and television. And don't forget to share your own memories and experiences with us in the comments below. Born April 22, 1946, in Baltimore, Maryland, John Waters grew up in a typical suburban neighborhood. His parents, Patricia and John Waters Sr., were conservative and hardworking, but they also encouraged their children's creativity. This support played a crucial role in shaping the actor's artistic pursuits. As a child, Waters developed a fascination with cinema, often skipping school to watch movies. He was particularly drawn to transgressive films and exploitation genres, which would later influence his own work. Despite being raised in a traditional environment, he embraced counterculture ideologies during his teenage years. Waters attended New York University's film school in the mid-1960s, where he met future collaborators like Divine, Mink Stoll, and David Lockshire. These friendships laid the foundation for his Dreamland Productions company, through which he produced some of his most famous works. The city itself became another significant influence on Waters. Exposed to its vibrant art scene, he honed his unique comedic style while developing an appreciation for camp aesthetics. Inspired by Andy Warhol and other underground artists, he created provocative content meant to challenge societal norms. One pivotal moment came when Waters saw Jack Smith's Flaming Creatures, a groundbreaking experimental film. Its disregard for conventional narrative structure resonated deeply with him, further solidifying his desire to create unapologetic art. Additionally, the theater of the ridiculous movement significantly impacted his approach to storytelling, emphasizing parody and excess. Throughout his career, Waters has cited various mentors who supported and guided him along the way. Among them are filmmakers George Kuchar and Herschel Gordon Lewis, whose low-budget productions taught him valuable lessons about resourcefulness and originality. Furthermore, renowned playwright Charles Lidlam offered critical feedback on early scripts, helping shape his distinctive voice. From humble beginnings in suburbia to becoming a trailblazer in independent cinema, John Waters carved out a singular niche for himself. By drawing upon diverse inspirations and continuously pushing boundaries, he left an indelible mark on American culture. 
Today, his body of work continues to captivate audiences worldwide. John Waters was born on April 22, 1946, in Baltimore, Maryland. The actor, writer, and director grew up in a suburban neighborhood where he developed a love for cinema at a young age. As a child, Waters would often sneak into local movie theaters to watch films, which sparked his interest in filmmaking. Waters' family was supportive of his creative pursuits. His parents, Patricia and John Waters Sr., encouraged his love for movies, and even helped him make his first short film, Hag in a Black Leather Jacket, when he was just 16 years old. Despite his family's support, Waters' early films were often controversial and provocative. His debut feature film, Mondo Trasho, was a low-budget exploitation film that featured graphic violence and nudity. However, it was Waters' next film, Pink Flamingos, that truly put him on the map. The film, which starred drag queen Divine, was a cult classic that gained notoriety for its outrageous and offensive content. Waters' early films were often criticized for their explicit content, but they also gained a loyal following of fans who appreciated their irreverent humor and subversive messages. Over time, Waters' work became more mainstream, and he went on to direct films like Hairspray and Cry Baby, which were more accessible to a wider audience. Throughout his career, Waters has remained true to his unique vision and style. His work has been influential in shaping the world of independent cinema, and he continues to inspire new generations of filmmakers with his boundary-pushing approach to storytelling. Waters' upbringing in Baltimore and his early experiences with cinema had a profound impact on his career. His love for movies and his willingness to push boundaries have made him a beloved figure in the world of independent film. As a child, John Waters found solace in the local movie theaters of Baltimore, where he would often skip school to watch films. This early exposure to cinema ignited his passion for storytelling and filmmaking. At the age of 16, he made his first short film, Hag in a Black Leather Jacket, using a Aiden Lemony camera and a group of friends as actors. Despite facing criticism from his conservative community, Waters persisted in his filmmaking pursuits. He enrolled in New York University's film program, but dropped out after a year, feeling that the formal education stifled his creativity. Instead, he returned to Baltimore and began making experimental short films, often featuring his eccentric friends and family members. Waters' big break came in 1972 with the release of his first feature film, Pink Flamingos, which gained notoriety for its outrageous and provocative content. The film's success allowed Waters to continue making films, each one pushing the boundaries of good taste and becoming a cult classic in its own right. Throughout his career, Waters has remained true to his unique vision and has inspired generations of filmmakers with his irreverent and subversive style. His passion for filmmaking was ignited in his childhood and has continued to burn brightly throughout his career, leaving an indelible mark on the world of cinema. In Desperate Living, the final film by John Waters to feature Susan Walsh, viewers are treated to a unique and unforgettable experience. As a child, Waters engaged in imaginative games like playing car accident, and even fashioned a makeshift hook for a hand by putting a coat hanger up his sleeve. These early experiences shaped his creative mind, and likely influenced his distinctive storytelling style seen in his films. Interestingly, Waters has a distant familial connection to Maria Shriver through Richard Owings and his spouse Rachel, making them six cousins once removed. Despite their different backgrounds and paths in life, it's intriguing how connections can arise in unexpected ways. These fascinating insights offer a glimpse into the life of the actor behind some truly memorable productions. From his childhood antics to surprising family ties, these details add depth to our understanding of Waters and further enrich our appreciation for his work. John Waters, a renowned actor and filmmaker, faced numerous obstacles early in his career. Financial struggles were a constant challenge for him. With limited resources, he had to get creative to fund his projects. He turned to his close-knit group of friends, known as the Dreamlanders, to help bring his vision to life. They worked together, often taking on multiple roles both on and off-screen. Industry skepticism was another hurdle Waters had to overcome. His unconventional style and provocative themes were met with resistance by mainstream Hollywood. Undeterred, Waters continued to create his unique brand of cinema, often self-financing his films. One of his most iconic films, Pink Flamingos, became a cult classic despite its initial poor reception. The film's shocking content and outrageous humor divided audiences, but it gained a loyal following and solidified Waters' status as a trailblazer in independent filmmaking. 
Waters' resilience and determination paid off, and he became a respected figure in the film industry. His work continues to inspire and influence filmmakers today, serving as a testament to the power of creativity and perseverance in the face of adversity. In Pink Flamingos, the actor took on multiple roles, serving as the director, head producer, and sole screenwriter. One notable omission from the final cut is the character of Patty Hitler, played by a friend of Divine. Dressed in Nazi gear and privy to Connie and Raymond's location, Patty appears briefly during birthday party scenes despite her scenes being scrapped. The production marked a milestone for the actor. It became his first film to receive an R rating domestically, breaking away from the string of X-rated or unrated releases he was previously known for. Moreover, one of the pivotal moments in the actor's career came with the release of Hairspray. This classic not only showcased the actor's unique style, but also garnered widespread critical acclaim. The impact of this film extended beyond just entertainment. It challenged societal norms and celebrated diversity. Collaborators and critics alike praised the actor for bringing a fresh perspective to the industry. The success of Hairspray solidified the actor's reputation as a trailblazer in the world of cinema. In his final non-union film, the actor John Waters took on the role of infamous serial killer Ted Bundy in Serial Mom. An interesting behind-the-scenes fact involves the juror whom protagonist Beverly Sutphin tricks into wiping his nose during her trial. This actor had previously appeared as a juror in another Baltimore-based film, and Justice for All, which was directed by Barry Levinson. Notably, both movies were filmed 15 years apart and share a connection through their Baltimore roots. Another memorable moment in Serial Mom occurred when Kathleen Turner, who played Beverly, impromptuly waved to her family while pursuing her son Scotty. Initially, this detail went unnoticed by director Waters until he heard laughter from the audience during a screening. These instances highlight how even seemingly minor elements can contribute significantly to a movie's appeal, often stemming from the creativity of actors like Waters and Turner and their collaborative efforts during production. John Waters, a legendary figure in American cinema, is known for his unique artistic vision and provocative style. Growing up in Baltimore during the 1950s, he was heavily influenced by the city's eccentric culture, which would later become a staple in his films. As a child, he developed a love for movies and began making short films with a camera gifted to him by his parents. Waters' early works often featured outrageous characters and taboo subjects, earning him the nickname The Prince of Puke. His breakthrough film, Pink Flamingos, starred drag queen Divine and pushed boundaries with its graphic content. This marked the start of Waters' distinct aesthetic, one characterized by camp, irony, and dark humor. His subsequent films, including Female Trouble and Hairspray, continued to explore themes of nonconformity, social justice, and sexual freedom. Despite being labeled controversial, these cult classics resonated with audiences due to their underlying messages of acceptance and empowerment. Throughout his career, Waters has drawn inspiration from his own life experiences, blending reality with fiction. For instance, Polyester features a character based on his mother, while Serial Mom satirizes true crime stories popularized during his childhood. As both a writer and director, Waters maintains complete control over his productions, ensuring each project remains true to his singular artistic vision. By embracing unconventional ideas and celebrating outsiders, he has created a lasting impact on independent cinema and inspire generations of filmmakers who share his passion for subverting societal norms. In 2010, John Waters' musical, Hairspray at the Marriott Theater in Chicago, Illinois, received a prestigious nomination for the Joseph Jefferson Award for production of a musical. This recognition underscores the enduring appeal of this classic production. In the notorious film Pink Flamingos, the actor, playing the role of Mr. J, is part of a scene where Divine and the party guests inhale amyl nitrate also known as poppers. At the time of filming, these were still legal to purchase at drugstores. When Divine starts laughing uproariously, it's a sign that it has kicked in. The actor's first 35mm format film was a significant milestone. This classic marked a transition to a more mainstream format, reaching a wider audience and leaving a lasting impact on the world of cinema. Known for his distinctive style and provocative themes, John Waters has left a lasting impact on the film industry. According to critic Roger Ebert, Waters is one of America's most original filmmakers. His early works, like Pink Flamingos and Female Trouble, challenged societal norms and pushed boundaries. 
These films gained cult status and established Waters as a unique voice in cinema. His influence extends beyond his own work, inspiring many other artists. Film director Jody Duncan says, without John Waters, there would be no Hedwig and the Angry Inch, no Juno, no election. He gave permission to explore taboo subjects in mainstream media. Even after moving towards more mainstream territory with films like Hairspray, Waters retained his signature style and sense of humor. This film was later adapted into a successful Broadway musical, further solidifying his place in popular culture. Themes of nonconformity and individualism run throughout Waters' oeuvre, resonating deeply with audiences. As actor Johnny Depp, who starred in Waters' Cry Baby, puts it, he celebrates outsiders, he gives them dignity, and makes them cool. In terms of technique, Waters often uses satire and parody to critique society. His approach to storytelling combines elements of both high and lowbrow culture, creating a unique blend that defies categorization. Moreover, Waters has played significant roles in various films himself, demonstrating impressive acting chops alongside his skills behind the camera. Whether playing a demented dentist in Serial Mom or a sleazy lawyer in Seat of Chucky, he brings an eccentric energy to each performance. Overall, through his unapologetic vision and irreverent wit, John Waters continues to inspire generations of filmmakers and entertain diverse audiences worldwide. Transitioning to the actor's roles in Serial Mom, the film being screened with Straight Jacket, directed by William Castle, an early influence on the actor. In Hagsploitation, the actor portrayed Castle in a sequence set at a screening for Straight Jacket. Moving on to Pink Flamingos, in the original script, there was a scene where Connie Marble's hair catches fire. Initially, Mink Stoll was set to do the stunt, but changed her mind, a decision the actor later appreciated as it prevented serious injuries. Lastly, in Serial Mom, the actor mentioned on special features that it's their favorite film from their career. John Waters, the actor and filmmaker, leads a life that is as unconventional as his work. A native of Baltimore, Maryland, he still resides in his hometown, which remains a significant source of inspiration for his art. Known for his love of all things transgressive and provocative, Waters is a collector of oddities and has amassed an eclectic collection of art, artifacts, and memorabilia over the years. Waters is a passionate advocate for free speech and artistic expression. He has been a vocal critic of censorship and has spoken out against efforts to ban or restrict access to films and other forms of art. In 2015, he was awarded the National Coalition Against Censorship's Arts Advocacy Award in recognition of his contributions to the fight for free expression. Philanthropy is also an essential part of Waters' life. He has been involved with several charitable organizations over the years, including the Maryland Film Festival, which he has supported since its inception in 1999. In 2013, he established the Provincetown International Film Festival's John Waters Prize, which is awarded annually to a filmmaker who has made a significant contribution to the world of independent film. In addition to his work as a filmmaker and actor, Waters is also a successful author and visual artist. His books, including Shock Value, Crackpot, and Role Models, offer a glimpse into his unique worldview and provide insight into the mind of one of America's most original artists. His visual art, which often incorporates elements of photography, sculpture, and collage, has been exhibited in galleries and museums around the world. Despite his success, Waters remains grounded and committed to his hometown. He is a frequent presence at local events and has been known to support local businesses and artists. His unique blend of humor, irreverence, and artistic vision has made him a beloved figure in Baltimore and beyond. John Waters has a close friendship with Pat Moran, a casting director based in Baltimore. Many members of the Dreamlanders acting troupe, who had significant roles in Waters' previous films, can be spotted in smaller or supporting parts in his later works. Interestingly, the actor was also considered for the role of Detective John Munch in the television series Homicide Life on the Street. His presence would undoubtedly have added another layer of uniqueness to the show. John Waters, the actor known for his work in films like Pink Flamingos and Hairspray, has left an undeniable impact on the industry. His unique style and boundary-pushing content have made him a cult favorite among audiences. Throughout his career, Waters has never shied away from taking risks or tackling taboo subjects. This bravery and originality have earned him a devoted following and a place in cinema history. When it comes to giving advice to aspiring actors, Waters emphasizes the importance of staying true to oneself. He encourages up and coming talent to find their own voice 
and not be afraid to take chances. Waters also stresses the value of hard work and persistence. As he puts it, if you want to be a success in this business, you need to be willing to put in the time and effort. Looking ahead, Waters shows no signs of slowing down. In fact, he continues to push boundaries and challenge conventions through his art and activism. For those who admire his work, Waters offers this sage advice, never underestimate the power of being different. Embrace what makes you unique and don't be afraid to stand out from the crowd. In his final film with regular actresses Cookie Mueller and Edith Massey, Hairspray director John Waters faced a challenge. Mueller was dying when production began and Massey had passed away in 1984. Waters had planned to direct Flamingos Forever, a sequel to Pink Flamingos, but Massey's death and Divine's desire for serious roles led to its cancellation. The character of Dawn Davenport in Female Trouble was based on two delinquent teenage girls Waters knew in high school. This classic film showcases Waters' unique ability to find inspiration in unconventional places. When casting the role of Wade Crybaby Walker in Crybaby, Waters turned to teen magazines featuring Johnny Depp of 21 Jump Street. Depp, eager to avoid being typecast as a television teen idol, found the script funny and strange, making him the perfect fit for this offbeat role. In his films, Waters consistently challenges norms and expectations, creating a lasting impact on the world of cinema. His ability to draw from real-life experiences and cast against type results in a body of work that continues to resonate with audiences today. Beginning his career in the 1960s, John Waters, the actor, writer, and director, has left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. With a passion for pushing boundaries, he first gained attention with his transgressive films, challenging societal norms and expectations. Waters' innovative spirit shone through in his early works like Pink Flamingos and Female Trouble, which daringly explored themes of nonconformity and individualism. His unique storytelling approach resonated with audiences, turning these cult classics into enduring symbols of counterculture. As time progressed, so did Waters' influence. He ventured into mainstream territory while maintaining his distinctive style, helming projects such as Hairspray. This musical comedy became a surprise hit, highlighting his ability to adapt and thrive across various genres. Throughout his journey, Waters never lost sight of his roots or creative vision. In addition to filmmaking, he pursued other passions including writing books, curating art exhibitions, and even performing one-man shows. These diverse endeavors further solidified his status as a trailblazer who continues to inspire generations. The power of creativity and perseverance lies at the heart of Waters' success. By staying true to himself and constantly exploring new ideas, he transformed the landscape of American cinema. His enduring impact serves as a testament to the potential that lies within each of us to challenge conventions, innovate relentlessly, and ultimately shape our world through unyielding dedication to our craft. As you reflect on the career of John Waters, what comes to mind? His early films, like Pink Flamingos and Female Trouble, sure were different. They brought us into a whole new world, filled with unforgettable characters and outrageous moments. Waters has always been one to push boundaries, making audiences question societal norms through his unique lens. This groundbreaking director then moved on to tackle mainstream success with movies like Hairspray. Even today, he continues to inspire up and coming filmmakers who aim to challenge conventions. Now it's your turn. Tell us about your favorite memories of John Waters' work in the comments below. What makes his artistry so special to you? And don't forget to spread the love by liking, sharing, and subscribing for more engaging discussions about influential figures and entertainment.